Foundational principle number three, change always, and I mean always, no matter how difficult the change, it always creates opportunities. But you got to work to find them. They're not going to pop out on their own. Now, this is what this was the title of my first book. My first book, I titled it The Ring in the Rubble. All right, Gary, what in the world is that? Well, imagine, imagine wherever you are right now, sitting there in a room with your colleagues or at home or whatever. But imagine right there in front of you is a big old pile of rubble, kind of like a picture I got here, but it's a big old mountain of rubble. And then I tell you, hey, buried within that rubble is a very valuable golden ring very valuable. And that ring is yours. All you have to do is go find it. Well, you, to find the ring, you got to start digging. It's not going to pop out of the rubble on its own. Now, here's the metaphor. The ring is what I use as the gold, a metaphor for the golden opportunity that every change creates. That's the golden ring. The rubble? What's that a metaphor, Gary? That The r rubble is a metaphor for what I was talking about at the beginning, the uncertainty, the anxiety, the fear, sometimes the anger about the change that's happened. But here's the beauty of it all. There is always, always, always a ring in the rubble. But you got to dig to find it. And if you're going to dig to find it, like there I got a shovel, if I give you a bunch of tools, you can dig through that rubble and find the ring. My job today is going to be to give you tools to dig through the rubble to find your ring. So let's review. The three fundamental foundational principles we've covered so far. Change is hard because it's hard, so embrace it as a challenge. Number two, we don't always get to choose change, but we always get to choose our response. That's our superpower. Ask, how am I gonna respond, not why did this happen? And change always creates opportunities, but we got to work hard to find them. It was Thomas Edison who said, opportunities missed by most people because it's dressed up in overalls and looks like work. Well, yeah, we got to work, but that's part of the fun. So like I said, my job is now to give you tools to help you find your ring, to help you find your opportunity in whatever change you have going on in your life and whatever changes you can anticipate will happen in your life. And we're going to take these principles because those are nice principles, but how do you take them and you turn them into action? So let's dig a little bit deeper. Okay, you're Richard Schultz. You started this company called Sound of Music back in the late 70s, early 80s. And you sold stereo equipment, TVs, speakers, and all that kind of stuff. You built it up to 10 stores. And then this tornado comes through your town. And this is literally a picture of your largest, most profitable store. This was the largest, most profitable store of the 10 that Richard owned. Now, I've been telling you here in my first few minutes, the change always creates opportunity. And there's always a ring in the rubble. But here's how you begin to find it. And Richard's story and his team helps us see how. First thing you got to do, even when you look at a change that devastating, you got to assume there's opportunity here somewhere. And in order to find it, you have to have a bias towards action. Now, stop and look at that mess there. Richard had 62 people that worked for him across all 10 stores. Two hours after that tornado, they were all on site. And just imagine what they did. They must have, first, they had to be devastated. But then they started digging through and they started trying to clean up. And while they were moving, while they were interacting, while they were talking, they probably began to say, well, what are we going to do? Well, how can we, how, how are we going to adapt to this? This could wipe us out. But they had a bias towards action, not just cleaning that stuff up, but through the very physical activity of digging through the rubble, they came up with a plan. And when I say a bias towards action, six days later, they executed their plan. Now, if you look at this picture, you look over to the left there, you see the sound of music. It's all boarded up. And here's what they came up with. Six days. While they were going through that cleanup process, they must have started talking. And they said, you know, what can we do? How can we adapt to this thing? And somebody said, you know what? This gives us an opportunity to do something we could never do before. The tornado has created an opportunity. And people must have said, what opportunity is that? And somebody said, you know what we can do? We can have a tornado sale. We could never do that before because we hadn't had a tornado. And then people must have said, well, what's a tornado sale? And they made it up as they went along. I spoke for the Coca-Cola down in Latin America. This phrase right here, push for progress not perfection. I learned that from him. And that's exactly what these guys did. They didn't, 
what they said was, you know, we're get, we can't let people into our store. You saw what it looked like. So they boarded up the store. They put all their inventory out in the parking lot. And then somebody must have said, well, we can't charge what we normally charge for our inventory. It's been through a tornado. So they said, OK, we're going to discount it. And they said, well, how are we going to display it? They said, well, we're just going to put it in rows and people can go up and down the rows, maybe go into those trucks and, and pick out what they want. And then they took a chance. They took their advertising budget for the rest of the year, plowed it into this sale, tornado sale, high end electronics at a discount. And if you look at that parking lot, it turned out that that sale that they did six days after, their, uh, after the tornado was the most successful sale in the, in the history of the company. It was a Saturday and they sold more stuff than they typically would sell in all 10 stores. It was so successful they went running back to their warehouse and got more stuff that hadn't been through the tornado and extended the sale another day. It was so successful for the next couple of years, every year they would have a tornado sale where they would take their high-end stuff and discount it. It was so successful that after two or three years of that, when that was always their most popular day of the year, Richard said, wait a minute, I think this tornado has given me a chance to see a whole new business model rather than high-end stuff at high-end prices and kind of in a stuffy formal place. Instead, he decided to change his entire concept to let people go up and down the rows, discount this stuff on a permanent basis and have some fun. The day of the tornado, as I understand it, that the, the staff is wearing T-shirts that on the front of it, it said tornado sale. Come on in. And and on the back, it said, get your best buy. And folks, that's how Best Buy got it started by the Richard Schultz and his people adapting to that tornado. Cool.